All right, I, I didn't want to do this, but here we are. The title says it all. Patreon, the popular crowdfunding platform that every YouTuber in existence promotes at the end of their videos, is being used to fund neo-Nazis, and the company is doing nothing despite me bringing it to their attention. Now I get to spend time putting this whole thing together and shooting it out there for the whole internet to see and react to. That won't be exhausting at all. I have notes on my computer here, since this is a lot more extensive than usual, it has a lot more information, and I just want to make sure I get everything right, so I'll be looking down a lot, but I'll also be putting up visuals, so just pretend I'm not doing that. The TLDW of this is that there is a book publisher called Castalia House that takes funding through Patreon, and it's run by neo-Nazis who dox people, harass critics, and publish works that violate the website's guidelines. Despite all of this, reporting them has done nothing and Patreon hasn't responded to my emails, so I guess I have to make this big public spectacle of this all. Check the pinned comment for links to overwhelm Patreon with reports and emails until they do something. Ideally, Patreon would enforce its own damn rules without being forced to do so, but if the last few years have taught us anything, it's that business ethics is a myth concocted by PR departments. The only way an internet company will ban users is if it becomes unprofitable to keep them around. And oftentimes, the only way that happens is to generate a public outcry that damages their brand. So that's the goal here. I'm trying to generate a public outcry to get Patreon to do the job it should already be doing. Okay, so... This all started when someone requested that I read this book. It's called uh, Victoria, a novel of fourth generation war. I heard it was a terrible right-wing fantasy, not unlike True Allegiance, and those are a dime a dozen, but I thought it might have been fun to mock it. So I bought a copy, used, because they aren't getting a fucking cent out of me, and uh, it's rare for me to refer to a piece of fiction as disgusting, but that's what this is. It's, it's disgusting. Literally the first page talks about the government executing gay people, and it's phrased as putting flames to the faggots, and it only gets worse from there. The long and short of it is that this book is about the US government collapsing because there are too many Jews, black people, and non-fundamentalist Christians running around, and the big, strong, main character man makes a new country in New England. That darn political correctness prevents the government from properly dealing with all those felonious Negroes and drug-dealing Mexicans. Well political correctness, and the coterie of Jews that secretly runs all the world's governments and businesses. And I am not putting words in the author's mouth here. All of this is put in here with this exact phrasing. There's no subtext or reading be between the lines here. It's all front and center. As an aside, a coterie of Jews sounds like the title to the worst young adult novel ever written. There are scenes where all the minorities are thrown out of the country or killed, the city of Atlanta is bombed killing millions of civilians, and women are forced back into being baby makers. All of this is portrayed as unequivocally good. Both the characters and narrator make sure to point that out. Hell, there is a line about how marital rape isn't real and wives are obligated to give their husbands release at all times. I believe it comes right after all the Puerto Ricans are thrown out of the country. Most anyhow, the, the ones who aren't thrown out are executed. It is some genuine Turner Diary shit. Admittedly, it is funny at a few points. Like how the few black people that are allowed to stay can only do so if they agree to be sharecroppers, and they're all led by this group called the Council of Responsible Negroes. I mean, that sounds like something from 1870, so it, it did make me laugh at just how over the top it is. Even setting aside the political stuff, which you can't because it suffuses every sentence, this book is terrible. The dialogue just regurgitates talking points. None of the characters have any personality, and despite the author's supposed expertise in warfare, the main characters only ever charge right into battle and win through the power of friendship. It's an awful book in every way. I even found a few spelling errors in there. You might be tempted to think that this is satire, that it's someone making fun of the sort of person who would enjoy this, but looking into the people who made it, I can tell you it's 100% sincere. This video is about the book's author and its publisher, because they've both done shit to get banned from Patreon, but I'll start with the author. Thomas Hobbes is a pen name for a fella named William S. Lind. The name might sound familiar, as he was one of the people who developed the concept of fourth generation warfare. Beyond that, he is an insane person. Just, just an absolute insane person. For starters, when you Google him, this picture comes up, but that's not Lind. Uh, Lind never served in the military, though he sure acts like he did. He's always been very open about being a member of the far right. 
He writes about how things like homosexuality and not being a fundamentalist Christian are causing America to collapse. At times, he's even been more naked about it than that, since he once claimed that black, actually, more than once, claimed that black Americans were better off as slaves and has openly worked with people who claim Israeli Jews secretly run the American government. Now, you might be familiar with cultural Bolshevism, which was a conspiracy theory created by Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party to describe the way that Jews and socialists were working in secret to destroy the West by making weird paintings and songs, basically. That'll make us all gay and wreck the family, which will then collapse Western civilization. I'm really not leaving things out or making it sound more stupid than it is. That, that's what it is. And more recently, neo-Nazis and neo-Nazi adjacent groups have tried to rebrand this idea by changing its name to cultural Marxism, fooling absolutely no one with more than a quarter of a fucking brain cell. One of the biggest names that first promoted the cultural Marxism rebranding in the late 90s and early aughts was William S. Lind, alongside other human pawn scum like Pat Buchanan, Andrew Breitbart, and Jordan Peterson. Lind is also a monarchist for some reason. Uh, you might have heard of Veraboos, people who are obsessed with the German army from World War II and won't let facts get in the way of their militaristic fantasies. Uh, Lind is their rarer cousin, the Kaiserboo. Kaiserboos are basically the same, only they obsess over the Prussian and later German imperial army. He seems to think that the general staff was the height of military progress and that the dissolution of the German empire was the biggest tragedy in world history. His words, not mine. That's not even the worst Lind has to offer. Back in 2011, some prick named Anders Breivik murdered 77 people in a series of terrorist attacks in Norway. Breivik is a full-on fascist who feels that Western civilization is being overrun and destroyed by Jews and Muslims, therefore it's okay to murder a bunch of white children. A real piece of shit, most would agree. Terrorists are fucking overrated, they're fucking morons. That guy in Norway, my plan for white supremacy, step one kill 68 white people. <laughs> Before the attacks, he published a 1,500-page manifesto explaining his views. Most of it was just copy-pasted from the writings of other far-right crazies, including 27 pages directly from William S. Lind. Yep. Dude inspired at least one terrorist attack. But now onto the main reason for this video. The publisher for Victoria, as well as other far-right drivel, is Castalia House. Castalia is run by someone named Theodore Beale, who usually writes under the name Vox Day. I say it's run by him, really Castalia is just him. It hasn't published anything from writers other than Beale since 2018 as far as I can tell, and even before that it didn't offer much in the way of editing or marketing. It was just a way for Beale to gather like-minded victims of fetal alcohol syndrome under a single name before they all realized it was stupid and left. Beale is a failed musician, a failed video game developer, and failed sci-fi author who realized he can only achieve success by appealing to extreme elements in society and getting them to give you their money. So now he does that on his blog with a design straight out of 2004. Because if he shares their views, they'll pretend he knows how to write. Kind of like how they pretend Gina Carano isn't a shitty actress. He's basically said every awful thing that Lind has said, and then some. He's a holocaust denier. He's claimed that genital mutilation and honor killings are good for women. He said Jews living in America can't be trusted because of dual loyalties. All religions but Christianity should be outlawed. You know the drill. If you've had a laugh at the whole Sigma male thing that began recently, Beale was the one who started that. If you're unfamiliar, sometimes insecure men call themselves alpha males because they think if they act dominant then they'll get all the sex they want. And of course, alphas are on top of the social hierarchy that they invented, therefore they're superior to others. At some point, Beale realized that Despite being such an alpha chad, women weren't hopping on his dick, so he invented a new spot on the hierarchy. Sigma males are just alphas who choose to exist outside of the social hierarchy, so they don't get as much pussy. Now all the self-proclaimed alphas have an excuse for why their cocks are as dry as the Beneville salt flats. It's because they choose to live that way. Totally. It's totally your choice to not have any friends or meaningful relationships, Ted. But that's just an example of how he's a massive fucking loser. Just like that time he tried to rig the Hugo Awards to get his book recognized. I'm more focused on his defense of the Taliban trying to murder Malala Yousafzai, and that time he admitted to being a rapist. Doing stuff like all of this, even outside of Patreon, is explicitly against their rules. That's why they banned Lauren, immigration is bad but it's fine for me to immigrate to Australia, Southern, Milo the Pedo, Carl of Swindon, and Owen, 
Dennis Prager hates anti-Semitism but is fine with me on his show, Benjamin. The difference is that all those generated bad press for the company, and this hasn't so far. But hey, maybe you can somehow argue that his situation is different. Maybe you think that he should be allowed to say abhorrent things. And I kind of agree, I don't think the government should come in and stop him from publishing books or writing books or whatever like that. It's just that it is against Patreon's rules, and those need to be enforced evenly or they don't exist at all. You know what else is against their rules? Doxing and harassment, both of which Beale has done. In 2013, a woman left a negative review of his book on Amazon, so he tracked down her address and published it on his blog, telling his followers to go bother slash threaten her. Pretty sure that's what got Onision banned. And, you know, for the sake of levity, here's his reaction to getting banned. <laughs> what am I gonna do? What, what am I gonna do? I'm covered in kombucha, and I have no more Patreon! So it's pretty clear that Beale and Castalia House are involved in some nasty shit, meaning Patreon is helping to fund his activities. As of this writing, Castalia rakes in $5,305 a month, which is around $63,660 every year. That's after Patreon takes its cut. Remember, this is mostly going to one guy. I don't know how much he makes off his shitty blog or peddling his books, but he's certainly not some starving artist. He's made a decent living with his grifting, which matches his family history since his father ran a successful computer company before being arrested for tax evasion and possibly trying to murder the judge that presided over his trial. It's a weird story. But Beale came from wealth, and he's kept it by pandering to the lowest common denominator, not through hard work or skill. I gathered up most of this info two weeks ago and sent in reports to Patreon. They did nothing. Then I wrote up an email complete with links and screenshots that proved all of this and sent it into their guidelines department. They still did nothing. I got a generic email response that said they don't share details related to their investigations, and since then there's been silence. I even got a few people on Discord to send in the same email and nothing has happened. It's pretty clear by now that Patreon won't act unless we force them to, and the only way to do that is with social pressure, so I guess let's do that. I put a copy of the email I wrote on a Google Doc, complete with links, screenshots, and the address to Patreon's guideline violation address. I tried to stick the worst of it in there, but there's still plenty of material, so you know, if you guys want to add some more on there, feel free. And uh, for some reason, I decided to link that down below, so if someone wanted to send the company an email letting them know how upset they are with this, that would be super easy to do. I also linked Castalia's Patreon page so you can easily report it and send in links to Beale's nasty behavior to Patreon. You know, if you, if you feel like it. The whole point of this is to make so much noise that the higher-ups at Patreon become afraid of the hit their reputation will take if they don't take care of the problem. So go on Twitter and stuff to spread the word with the hashtag PatreonFundsNazis. Because we all need a catchy fucking hashtag to bring attention to an issue that's already been brought to their attention. Share this video, or rather, spam it all over the place until it annoys everyone enough to get something done. Because that's the only way they'll listen. And before you get your panties in a bunch, this is not censorship. Beale and Lind can write whatever they want and try to sell it to other sexually frustrated losers, they just don't get to flagrantly break Patreon's clearly stated rules. At least, they shouldn't be able to, but we've already gone over how capitalists will look the other way when it comes to fascism. Beale can fucking cry and piss and moan all he wants, and he almost certainly will over on his blog, but I really don't give a shit. Do you know why? Because he's not a threat to me. He's a sad, middle-aged man looking for validation and attention. That's why he tried to rig the Hugos. That's why he started the Sigma male craze. He wanted to pretend he's a misunderstood badass who voluntarily left society. If he loses his Patreon, he's just going to keep blogging the most outrageous shit he can think of so people will pay attention to him for a few more minutes. Most right-wing grifters started as failed artists. Ben Shapiro wanted to be a screenwriter. Steven Crowder wanted to be a comedian. Steve Bannon wanted to be a producer. And Ted Beal wanted to be a sci-fi writer. They all sucked at what they tried to do, and rather than work to get better, they blamed their problems on political enemies. Conservatives and right-wingers are not discriminated against in Hollywood or the arts. Clint Eastwood's career has been going strong for 66 years, and he's pretty open about being conservative. None of his views are hateful, it's just stuff that a lot of people would disagree with. You know why his career is unaffected? Because he's good at his job. He's been an actor, director, producer, writer, and composer, and he's kicked ass at all of them. 
He was even a mayor once. He's, he's one of the most successful people in the history of the film industry. That's because he has skill and talent that these other losers don't. And on some level, they understand that. It's much easier to whip up a crowd by telling them what they want to hear than to spend time honing your craft. These people are allergic to hard work. Because they'd always had things handed to them and never had to struggle. Not really. They come from upper middle to upper class families. If I wanted to scare the liberals, I'd call them petite bourgeoisie, but that's not the point. The point is that this is where fascism springs from. Mediocre, rich douchebags who don't think they've been given enough and that they're entitled to more. I really, really hate having to do this because conducting all this research and putting it together is fucking exhausting. I want to go back to complaining about shitty fantasy novels. That's more fun. It's way more fun. I'm an anarchist, but my channel is not a purely political one nor do I want to make it a purely political channel. I made this because I felt it was something that needed to be done and because I'm not ashamed of my beliefs. I don't have to hide behind euphemisms like paleoconservative or alt-right or men's right activist because I'm not a fucking coward. Ted Beal and his ilk and the people who run Patreon are. That's the closest thing to a greater point I can glean from all this. Hopefully that makes it worth your time. Uh, be sure to spam that hashtag. And I might as well take an opportunity to trigger them some more, so... Uh, trans women are women. God isn't real. Gender and sex are different things. Race is a social construct. And the American Civil War was fought over slavery. All of those are verifiable facts, and facts do not care about your feelings. Fuck it. Follow, follow me on Twitter.